Hi and welcome to Show Sir's classes. Today we are going to be doing some very important questions in chemistry. You can call or WhatsApp for doubts or queries or more video from this course. The given number is given on the screen and in the description below. Let's start off with our first question. We need to find the true statement about the following compound. Cu H2O 6 to the power 2 plus. Is it A, B, C or D? Please see the answers because I am going to say you how to do it. Therefore, the answer is Cuprous ion is a D9 system and shows a distortion called as John Teller distortion that is Cu H2O 6 to the power 2 plus gives us 3D9 T 6 2G e to power 3g in this complex four h2o molecules are at equatorial positions and have a strong interaction with the metal ion thus has a shorter bond length the other two h2o molecules are at axial positions and have weaker interaction with this metal ion that is cuprous and are held at farther distance. Thus, four CuO bond lengths are shorter than the remaining two uh, is this true statement. Now let's continue with a different question. Now we are given two complexes platinum cyanide ions and nickel chloride ions respectively we need to find its magnetism let's write down the electronic configuration now the following is the electronic configuration of platinum in the 5d8 orbital there are two cases where there are unpaired electrons the S shell and the P shell remains vacant. Let's see what happens in presence of a strong ligand cyanide. Thus in presence of cyanide there are two electrons that were unpaired previously gets paired up and we have a case of DSP2. Since there are no unpaired electrons this complex is diamagnetic. Notice number A and number C can be removed from here since we have already obtained that platinum cyanide and ion is a diamagnetic. Thus it will be either between B or D. Let's check out for nickel chloride. Now following is the case for nickel chloride. Notice the there are unpaired electrons in nickel ion as well as NiCl4. This is because chlorine is a weak ligand. Thus we have a sp3 kind of high hybridization. Thus this complex is paramagnetic due to presence of two unpaired electrons. Now the value of x in Cu, Co, x plus needs to be figured out such that it obeys the 18 electron rule. The 18 electron rule says that it must have 18 electrons in its valence shell 
as there are already 10 electrons in the buff com compound of Cu plus ions that is 3d10 in the 3d10 orbital and each CO would contribute two electrons thus as per this 18 electron rule we have Cu plus plus X electrons from CO equals to 18 thus 10 plus 2x equals to 18 or x equals to 4 thus number c will be our answer now we need to figure out how the red color of ruby is formed we are given four cases let's see what the correct answer will be in ruby there are chromium 3 plus ions which are present in Al2O3 lattice as impurities thus due to DD transition of chromium 3 plus ions it imparts this red color of the ruby crystal now our answer will be number B now let us do a question on chemical reactions what will be the final products in reaction of BF3 with water that is bor boron trifluoride BF3 plus 3H2O gives us H3BO3 plus 3HF that is boric acid and hydrogen fluoride. The HF formed must react with this boric acid. Let's see what happens. 4 HF plus H3BO3 gives us HBF4 plus 3H2O. The following two reactions can be summarized as shown below. Thus, the answer is number B. Now we need to find the maximum value of a function AE to the power minus AX square where capital A is greater than 0 and small a, less than 0 and small a is greater than 0 at x let's see how to do this in the given function that is a e to power minus ax square first we check the value by putting x equals to 0 at x equals to 0 fx equals to a for any other value the value of x is always less than 1 this is due to the negative sign that's present on e thus the maximum value of this function is at x equals to 0 that is a and hence the answer is 0 the electrochemical cell given to us has two half cell reactions containing of AgCl in solid form and copper also in solid form. The mass of copper in grams is dissolved on passing 0.5 amperes of current for 1 hour. We are also given the atomic mass of copper and F equals to 96 500 C per mole. Let's see what the answer will be the mass of copper is deposited in given as m equals to zit we also know zit equals to ece equals to e by f 
therefore m equals to e by f i t which equals to capital M by n f i t where n equals to number of electrons liberated we are also given the following of options m f i and t and also n now putting all these values in this equation we find m equals to 0 0.59 grams and from our answer number d is the correct answer now let's calculate a half-life period of the constant initial concentration of co of the reactant at the zero order condition half-life period for an inert order reaction can be given as t half directly dependent on 1 by c naught n to power to the power n minus 1 now for n equals to 0 t half is directly proportional to 1 by c naught to the power minus 1 or t half is directly proportional to c naught that is number a now in the next question we need to calculate the first ionization energy of a helium atom we are given that the effective nuclear charge of helium atom is 1.7 notice we need to do it in ev the first ionization energy of helium atom containing 1s orbital can be given out in the following formula ie1 equals to 13.6 z square effective by n a square in ev putting in the values we get 39.304 EV and this coincides with number C. Now we have a question from gaseous theory. From the kinetic theory of gases, the ratio of most probable speed CMP to root mean square speed that is CRMS. Let's see how to do this. C most probable equals to 2 rt by m whole root over crms equals to root over 3 rt by m taking the ratio we find it comes to root 2 by 3 thus the answer is number b with this we come to an end of another amazing video please like subscribe and press on the notification button and stay tuned for more such questions and answers